In this guitar lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play the guitar solo to Master of Puppets by Metallica. A very inspirational solo for myself when I was learning. This song in particular was a huge goal for me and something that inspired me to keep playing the guitar. I, w I always said to myself, so once I heard that solo, I always said to myself, I really want to learn that. And that kept me going throughout learning the guitar and actually helped me a lot as well. So Master of Puppets is a great solo to learn and there's a lot of cool techniques involved with it as well. Um, so it's my take on it. It's the way that my ear has figured it out. I figure everything out by ear. Um, so there may be a couple of parts that aren't quite identical to the song but are as close as possible. I've, I'm going to break the guitar solo to this song down into pieces for you. So you'll have like a part one, part two, part three. It makes the learning process a lot easier and quicker in the long run. And it also allows you to give yourself break a break so you can learn one part and then take it away, practice it for a bit. And then whenever you feel you want to come back to it another time or another day and learn the next part. Look, that is the key to learning a solo, especially a solo like this one from Master of Puppets. Just learn it in pieces because when I originally learned it, it took me a long time to learn it. So try and learn it in pieces and try and have patience with it as well and it'll come together. I'm going to tell you which fingers to use for this guitar solo, which frets to play and I'm going to show you some cool quirky stuff with it. So enjoy, have fun, and I hope you have as much fun learning it as I did back in the day, and I hope it inspires you as much as it did me. Part one of the solo, which I like to do on the bridge pickup, it's got an alternate pick sound, but I do think it's got pull-offs within the track. Sounds like this. And it's just a natural minor pattern. It's really good to alternate pick it though, because it's really good for working on your pick in this pattern and real useful within uh, guitar playing in general. Um, so the stretch is between the 17th fret and the 12th fret on the high E. So we're going to put our little finger on the 17th fret. We're going to put our first finger on the 12th fret. Pick the 17th once with a down pick and pick the... 12th fret once with an up pick. Then move on to the B string, 13th fret with your second finger down pick. 12th fret with your first finger on the B string still uh, with an up pick. And then back to the 13th fret with your second finger with a down pick. And then you're going to back, go back up to the high E string with your first finger, put it on the 12th fret and up pick and then it repeats that whole pattern three times so it goes one two three and then there's the pattern is exactly the same however the little finger you want to move it to the 15th fret and do the same thing everything else is the same it's just the 17th fret changes to the 15th fret so you end up with so that full pattern goes. And then you basically just repeat that whole thing again. However, you skip out the last two notes the second time round. So you go. And you skip out this one and this one. Full pattern. And that's pattern one done. It is much faster than that, but as always, work on everything slow because that's how you, how you get the muscle memory drilled into your hands and you make it easy to play. Uh, next part, so part two, is be between the 19th fret and the 14th fret. 
So you're gonna go on the high E string, you're gonna do three picks on the 19th fret. With your third finger, then first finger, same string on the high E, 17th fret, three picks. 15th fret, same finger, first finger, three picks. 14th fret, same finger, three picks. So you got. And then you move your third finger, same string, high E, to the 17th fret, three picks. And then you do the 15th fret after it, three picks with the first finger, and the 14th fret after that, three picks with the first finger. So you get. And then you finish that line off with by moving to the B string, second finger on the 15th fret, and three picks. So you get. And that's part two done. Easy. Practice it slow, build up your speed. And part three. Now, um, this part, uh, I've just worked out what my ear feels it's doing, but it's, it feels more or less right to what he's doing. It's quite hard to hear this bit on the track. Um, so it does a bend on the 17th fret. Maybe two bends. A little vibrato. And then I, I do this and it works for me. Um, so it's like a kind of major feel to it, major pattern. Between the 15th fret and the 19th fret, you're going to go on the B string, you're going to go 15, 17, 19. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing on the high E string. And I like to do it legato this, so one pick on each string. Um, and then when you've done that high E string, pull off those notes. So you're pulling backwards to the, back to the 15. And then move down to the 14th fret, do a pick and then hit the 15th fret and the 17th fret on the high E string after it. So you get this. And you pull back off them as well. Pull back. And then I finish off on this 12th fret. So. That's what it feels like it does to me. Um, so part four, the next part. Um, this is the part that, when I, I've heard loads of um, people play this solo, and this is the part that I feel a lot of players um, don't get right ever and I feel Kirk even live does this completely different um, but this is what my ear has figured out that it does so I've seen people doing like completely different things to what's actually on the studio record for this part um, so my ear fi fi has figured out that it's on the G string you're going to go down to the fourth fret um, you need a bar for this as well well it's handy at least if you have a bar it's a but just a bonus if you have it because you can get it more like it is. Um, if you've not, then just bend it. Um, but basically, this fourth fret to the seventh fret it goes with a bar. So the first way would be if you didn't have a bar, just do it like that. And if you have a bar, bonus. However. It's pinched harmonics, so you wouldn't need you would need to know how to do pinched harmonics for this. It's more if you can get it's quite hard to get the pinched harmonic in the right spot. For me on this guitar, it's around about this neck area here, because pinched harmonics sound different in different spots that you do them in. And that's what that part does. Um, so part five next is like a little rundown between the second and fourth fret on the between the G and the A string. Uh, it's like a chromatic rundown four three two on the G string using these three fingers. So. <laughs> 
four, three, two. And then... Then you're going to hit the fourth fret on the D string with your third finger. And then back to the second fret on the G string with your first finger. So you've got... You're going to hit the fourth fret with your third finger on the D string. Second fret, fret on the D string with your first finger. Then you're going to hit the fourth fret on the A string with your third finger. And then you're going to go back to the second fret on the D string and hammer your third finger onto the fourth fret of the D string. Okay, halfway through now. It's quite a long solo. Okay, next part we're going to, so I think this is part six or something like that. We're going to jump up to this tenth and seventh fret area. Uh, high E string, and it's just a scale rundown, uh, basically. Um, so we're going to, so it's the Phrygian position of the E minor scale. Um, so we're going to 10th fret to 8th fret to 7th fret on the high E string. I would use your little finger to your second finger to your first finger. And then you want to hit the 8th fret of the B string with your little finger. And then it goes forward by two notes. Back, so back to this 8th fret on the high E string. Take off to the 7th fret of the high E. Back to the 8th fret of the B string. and A 10th fret of the B string, sorry. And then to the 8th fret of the B string. So you've got... Okay. And then the last part. You hit the 7th fret of the B string to the 8th fret of the B string to the 10th fret of the B string. And you finish off on the 7th fret of the high E string. Okay, and then you hit it again for the start of the next part. So the next part is just literally... A, a run starting at the Phrygian position working up in E minor and then it ends up switching key to F sharp minor so it's um now it switches to F sharp minor So I cheat a little bit on that end part. It does have a few more notes in. I'll show you with the extra notes um, that it's got. Okay, uh, so you're going to start on the seventh fret of the high E string. And then you're going to pick it again. This is alternate pick, this part as well, by the way. And then you're going to go 10, 8, 7 with these three fingers. Your first, second and little finger. And you play that twice. Okay, then it just repeats the same pattern upwards now, but the stretches get different. So it does the same thing now between the 12th and 8th frets. So it goes 12, 10, 8, and then again 12, 10, 8. Use the same fingers. Then it goes up by two frets, does the exact same thing, but 14, 12, 10, 14, 12, 10. Then it does goes into the E minor position. And does fifth with the first, third, and little finger. 15, 14, 12. Just once on this one. So in total there you've got. If you can do it right. Okay, and then the next part is where it switches shifts key to F sharp minor. Um, so it got it does this now. OK, 
Okay, I do cheat a little bit on this sometimes when I play it. Depends how lazy I'm feeling, to be honest. Okay, so I use my, I just use my first, my third finger and my little finger on this one. So it goes 17, 16, 14 on your high E string once. And then it goes 19, 17, 14 on your high E string. And it just bounces between them for a bit. It does. Four times in total on each one, so. Okay, so you've got. Okay, next part is this bit. Seventeenth and fourteenth fret, like a uni bend, but you're doing one note into the next. So you're going to do the seven, bend the seventeenth fret on the B string with your third finger, and then hit the fourteenth fret on the high E string with your first finger. You do that four times. And then you go 14th fret with your first finger. 17th fret with the third finger. These, this is on the high string, by the way. Back to the 14th fret on the high E string. Back to the, to the 19th fret with your little finger. 14th fret with your first finger. 17th fret with your third finger. And then back to the 14th fret. Okay, so from the run. And then the last part is just a load of bends basically. So it's a load of those uni bends working up almost chromatically. So it does the one on between the 17th and 14th fret. So 17th fret on the B string with your third finger. And it does. Three, I think. Uh, to the 14th fret on the high E string. Then it moves that all up by one fret to the 18th and 15th. Then moves it up two frets between the 20th and the 17th. And then up another fret to the 21st and the 18th. And then you finish off with a big bend. Um, yeah, a bend on the 22nd fret of the high E string. And if you've got a vibrato bar bonus. There you go, that's the full solo. There's a, there's a lot to take in, but if you put it together in, into parts like I've done there, I promise you it won't take you that long to learn it. And then it'll just be a matter of just take a few days to actually practice it as well. But what is key is that you've got the techniques learned that are involved. So if you've not got the techniques learned, just learn the solo anyway, because it's a means for learning the techniques any, uh, anyway. But it just bear in mind that it's not. It might not be an instant thing for you to learn. It may take a few months for you to get. When I first learnt this 15, 16 years ago, um, this took me absolutely ages to learn. And then I relearned when I relearned it uh, a couple of years ago. It was way easier because I 
define my techniques a lot by them. There you go, that is all of the parts to the solo to the song Master of Puppets by Metallica. It's a real fun one to learn and I really would say stick at it as much as you can. Don't try going for speed instantly, just absorb and take in all of the different parts because you have to find yourself utilising a lot of the stuff involved in this solo later in your guitar playing life if you aren't already doing so. So absorb it in, take your time, practice slowly and have fun with it.